Hey guys, we're back for episode 3 and we've received some news since our last encounter. Mm. <laughs> so I received my results from uni, my final results, which was accumulation of the three to four years that I spent there. And I managed to receive a first class honours degree. I'm not sure what the equivalent is, if you're outside the UK and use something like the GPA or something. Uh, in fact, let me check. So guys, this is from a handbook from my uni. Should be okay to show. So to explain how degrees are classified, um, as it says here, the minimum mark to pass is 40%. Anything below 40% is technically a fail. And I think you'd have to either reset that um, assessment again. Reset, reset, reset. Up here, this is how the marks are classified. So third class degree, that's from 40 to 50. So 40 to 39, I'd say is a third class degree. Um, lower second or a 2-2 is from 50 to 59. A 2-1 or upper class second is from 60 to 69. And anything that which is 17 upwards is classified as a first. So for my overall mark, I managed to get 81%. So that's classified as a first class honours degree. I've looked at how the UK classification is compared to GPA. So this site, I'm guessing is just an estimate. But 40% is equivalent to a GPA of 2.0, 50% 2.7, 60% 3.3 and 70% is 4.0. I'm not sure if GPAs go above 4.0 but I'm sure if any of you guys know let me know because I heard you can get 5.0 or 5 point something so I'm not sure. I'm quite proud of the result. I think all the work that I put in has paid off so I'm quite happy to be honest. Yeah. So back to the video, so a little update was filling you guys in, referencing back to the first video and if you haven't seen that then go and check it out, episode 0, but today we're looking at Catus. A Catus is quite unknown to be honest, but um, it's basically a website which has um, a series of questions on it which are separated into difficulties. You can solve these questions using whatever language you want and it's just something you can just jump on pick up a question and just try and solve it really. Today I was picking a few at random and just showing the thought process of how you would approach a question and tackle it and how you break it down and provide a solution um, tailored to each task that the question entails. So let's jump over to the computer and let's go. Hey guys, so this is Katis, I've just logged in. Um, so yes, you have a list of problems. If you're part of a university, you can also represent your university as well. And let's just go straight to the problems. So this is the screen with all the problems. Anything which is green is which you have successfully completed. Anything which is red are problems which you have tried, but all the test cases for that problem haven't passed and why it is what you haven't tried yet. So let's look at mm, R2. So here, this is basically asking us to calculate what R2 is, but I'm guessing we're arranging the values which we input for R1 and S. So I would have wrote a piece of code which does that. So let's just double check. I've created a scanner. I've said I want to receive keyboard input. I take an integer for R1 and S. I initialize R2, and then I work out what R2 is using um, R1 and S, and I just print it. Nice and simple. I can see I've enclosed the code in a try and catch statement, but my catch is empty, which is something you shouldn't really do, but it's a thing to look out for. You just basically print whatever your exception is using print message or print stack trace, I think it is. So we can see that all the test cases passed and once that occurred, then the question will be accepted. Um, it took 0 0.07 seconds for the program to run and it's written in Java. Looking back at this code, I don't know why I have an empty print lines there. I'll remove that. Lines 11 through to 13 can all be condensed into a single line. For example, this could be replaced with just this. I technically don't really need a variable for what R2 is, but I'm guessing I was just being explicit. I must have been explicitly declaring the variable and explicitly setting the variable. It's always good to look back at your code and critique it and say, how would I do things differently if I could do it again? And that helps you to improve as a developer. And obviously, as you go on, you learn more skills as well. So you can possibly swap things out to make things more efficient. So 
Yep, let's continue. Let's choose our question. Uh, piece of cake. Mm, let's try this one. Next one. Avion. Okay. So, I'm just gonna spend time reading through the question and then we'll just jump straight to it. Okay guys, so what I can gather from this, we have five pieces of input and from these five pieces of input, if we find a substring which consecutively has the letters FBI, we print the positions in which the FBI substring occurs. For example here, we have in position one, FBI, position three, FBI and five FBI. If FBI is not exactly um, adjacent to each other, then that doesn't count and we print that the person got away. So let's just jump straight into it. So first thing that I'm going to do is just create a class called Avion, which is the name of the problem. So new Java, we're going to use Java, not Kotlin. Just make it simple. Uh, so here so hopefully that's big enough for everyone to see let's go so first thing i want to do create a main method like so test that it works let's print it let's run it sorry there we go hello world perfect so let's go back to the question so we need to take five pieces of input god it's been a while since i've done this five pieces of input um check for our substring fbi i'm guessing it has to be in capitals which is good okay and we store the position in which it occurred okay so how would i do this i would probably create a for loop that runs five times have a scanner inside which takes the user's input five times and then store the position in an array list maybe where the fbi occurs once i check for the fbi substring okay first thing we're going to do is to create an array list to store the positions then create a scanner to store user input and inside here system.in because you want to get input from the keyboard okay so next we're going to create a for loop that runs five times and inside this for loop we're going to take the user input so string user I'm going to check if the user input contains FBI if it contains FBI then we're going to add it to the list we use a string dot value of to convert the integer to a string one because int is of the primitive type so if we wanted to add an int we'd have to change that to um, integer like so which is like a wrapper class for int but strings just make things a lot easier um so if it contains fbi add it to the list now because you want to print in which line the fbi occurs and that's one because our for loop starts from zero it is better for us to add i plus one to the list perfect and then if there's so fbi is here that's one if there's no FBI, then we print he got away. If nothing has been added to the list, so if it's empty, then we want to print um, he got away. Else, we want to print the positions in which the car registration exists. So let's create a variable here, call it result. And then here we can just do result uh, plus equals positions list ah so you want to loop through the positions list first sorry so for each string position list, we want to plus. so we're saying for each position in the list add it as one long string and because there's an extra space on the end, we're going to want to get rid of that. So we're going to just trim this string. We can just um, do result dot trim, and trim gets rid of leading and trailing spaces. So check whether there we go. So let's test. 
to do it with some natural data. So hopefully this should print one. Perfect, it printed one. It should print he got away. Perfect. And the last one should print one, three and five. Perfect. So I think that's it guys. We create an array list, start positions, take keyboard input, loop through the list five times, taking each input line. If it contains FBI, we store a position in which it contains FBI. We plus one because our loop starts from zero. We create somewhere to store the results. If the list is empty, we print T got away. Otherwise we print, we concatenate the position of the list as one long string with a space and then we just remove the last trailing space, any trailing spaces i.e. this one for the last number so let's submit our this and hopefully everything is fine so, so let's submit perfect java Compiling. Hopefully. Ah, we got one wrong answer, guys. So let's go back and fix it. Guys, I'm an idiot. I forgot the exclamation mark on the end. So I think that's why it failed. Sorry. So let's go over here again. Add that. This is why you should always double check. <laughs> Save this and let's submit it again. And now it should pass. Uh, I should have checked that to be honest. That's totally on me. There we go. There we go. Accepted. Perfect. So, on to the next question. Okay, next question, guys. Let's try this one. 50 shades of pink. And let's see what it's about. So, we're looking for the word pink. It can appear normally mixed case um, in the form of rows. So let's just jump straight into this one guys. Should be nice and easy to be honest. Let's just call it 50 shades, why not guys? Perfect. Main. So we need to take user input, well, saying how many lines there's gonna be. And then we'll create a for loop that runs that amount of time. So, call it int times to run. Scanner, well, let's create a scanner. And we're just going to do scanner dot next int. Oh, let's make it big again. Sorry, guys. There you go. So, get the next integer. Um, how many times to run? If the variable isn't self explanatory enough. Then we create a for loop and it should run that many times. Create a for loop. In this for loop, we're going to get the user input. The next thing we're going to do is check whether this if user input dot contains again um, rows. Well, in fact, we're going to to lowercase in case. So that pink has capital letters as well. So rather than checking for lowercase pink we can use two lowercase first then we check whether it contains rows or it contains the word pink so rather than copy myself i'll do string and uh, use the input to lower just so it's more easy to read to be honest and so if it contains rows or this this is the or operator or pink then we're going to add it to a counter so we need a counter as well amount of pink or rose, we'll call it. I should have given it a better name, but nah. And then I'm just gonna say plus plus. And then at the end of this for loop, if it's zero, print that excuse, otherwise print the number. Which is this one. I think that should be it. Nice and simple, nice and quick. So let's test it all like this. Hopefully it prints nine for us. The 
this should print 9. Yep, 9. And I must watch Star Wars. Boom. Perfect. So I think that's it, to be honest, guys. <laughs> very simple, very quick. Let's double check. Let's submit it, I guess. Again. There we go. So let's do one more problem. Triple text, or not? So let's see what this one is about. So we're looking for occurrences of words. If the word is evident at least two times, two times out of the three, you know pretty what the word is. Okay, so I would use, I'm guessing, because only one word is, one letter is incorrect. I would find a length of the string, split it into three, that would separate out three different words. Add these words to, I'll probably use the collections um, method to find the frequency of a word. If it's greater than one, then that's the word. Yeah, okay, let's do it. I'm gonna create a main method. Then we're going to create a scanner to get the user input. Once we've done this, I'd create an array list so we can store um, the split words. Then I'm going to actually get the user input. So, um, so that gives me the hello, hello. Once I have that, I want to get the length of the word. Once I have that, I want to get the divided by three. And basically, I want to get each word. So let's just say first word is the user input substring from 0 to divided by 3 length that give me the first word second word um, substring from divided by 3 length to 3 length times 2 yeah or plus itself to be honest third word but, uh, Probably do this in a for loop, but I uh, will see from, from there to the end of the word. Right? Let's just print all of these and see whether it actually splits the word or not. Double check. So, let's copy this. Oh, cool. That surprised me. So, we managed to split the word, which is good. Next thing we're going to do is use the collections class to find the frequency so oh no let's add all these words to the array list to then array list now so we can just use the collections class to find the frequency of the words in the list so we give it the collection split words and the word we want to find so let's just do first word okay and then check the frequency for all three probably a better way to do this guys i'm just going to call it first word three that same for second and third so i'll check the frequency if it's greater than two um it must be a simple better way to do this print and then return yeah okay better way to do this look through the array list and then let's do int frequency and then this will be word instead and we can check if frequency is greater than two than one then we just print that word and then we can just return, right? Yeah, that's just a lot simpler than that, definitely. So let's test it. Perfect. Boom, so there we go. So let's try and submit this one. Boom, there we go. And that guys has been three different problems. Solve them Katis, show you how to just go through them. We made some mistakes, which is good because it shows that you need to always double check, which I didn't do. 
and find also find better ways to write things as well like before i was going about this in a weird way but that's a lot more later as well okay guys hope you enjoyed the video i hope you guys enjoyed today's video i found it helpful and informative and hopefully it's provided an insight as to how to approach a question and break it down and if you want to see more as always like and subscribe and look forward to episode four 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 <laughs> see you later guys